In our society, it is not common to face facts. But if we want to bring about change, we need to call things by their names. As Christians and as parents of our children, we cannot turn a blind eye to what is happening in society because it is directly affects our Christian and human values and directly impacts the life of our children. To speak frankly, the truth sounds like this. Thousands of clergy members sexually rape and morally cripple children every day. What do you think is the number of such stories that reach parents, let alone public exposure? Next, you will hear tragic stories of pedophilia's victims and statistics on only the cases of sexual violence committed by clergy members that have come to light. The Boston Globe, the first major public reaction to lead to a series of revelations about sexual violence committed by church officials, occur after the publication of articles in the Boston Globe's newspaper. In 2002, a series of articles from an independent journalistic investigation were published, exposing the scale and increase in cases of sexual violence within the Catholic Church, dating back to 1990s. In these articles, the general public was first presented with horrifying facts about the extent of pedophilia among clergy members. This precedent literally broke the dam of silence, and in the following years, a wave of loud revelations spread across the world. As a result, independent commissions were established in various countries to conduct more thought-through investigations into these crimes. Moreover, in 2015, the movie Spotlight was released, based on the real events of that time, telling the story of the investigation into one of the most notorious sex scandals. This film also played a significant role in breaking the taboo surrounding this topic. Friends, just by looking into the information and delving into the study of reports, it becomes clear that sexual violence against minors committed by clergy members is a true pandemic of our time. Let's now take a look at several stories that happened in France as reported by the Dutch Welle and Euronews. Before, he says he was a happy child with good marks at school. Then, when he was 11, his parents sent him to a summer camp run by the Catholic Church. It started on the second night. There was a priest. He'd assigned me the bed in the back corner. He clearly had his eye on me from the start. He pulled his chair close to the bed, and then he touched my genitals. And I had to touch his. I felt his pubic hair. I didn't know what it was. I hadn't even reached puberty. He says he didn't dare to say anything or resist. And the next night was even worse. He turned me onto my back. I don't recall how I ended up undressed all of a sudden. But I remember his weight behind me. And then he came every night and he raped me, every night, except the last two days, every night. The priest who raped Jean-Francois Bernard was also never brought to account. Bernard could only bring himself to report the priest three years ago. A bishop then contacted him. The phone call lasted exactly 37 seconds. The bishop wasn't sincere. There was no apology of any kind. He just said that he was praying for me. Completely insane. What shocked me the most was when he tried to put his tongue in my mouth. 
He stroked my genitals. I couldn't avoid it. I wanted to run away, and at the same time, I didn't know what to do. I was afraid that if I left that room, nobody would believe me. I remember the smell of sweat. I remember contacts with clothes. I remember his wandering hands under my shirt, which held me tightly against him. He used to put his leg behind me to block me, and he rubbed it against me. I remember that very well. I still have the sensation of his genitals against me. He would say, tell me you love me. And then he would say, you're my little boy. It's our secret. You mustn't tell anyone. A secret that for decades has weighed on dozens of former scouts aged from 8 to 12, whom Father Bernard Prena supervised from 1970 to 1991. A charismatic man, much appreciated by those who entrusted their children to him. There is a lot of such a story on the internet. And we have chosen not the worst case to show you. The French Independent Commission has published a final report, which consists of over 2,000 pages. The report reveals horrifying truth that, from 1950 to 2020, the number of victims who suffered at the end of clergy and religious order in France alone is approximately 216,000 children. Just think about it. In 70 years, over 216,000 shattered lives of children in just one country, France. And these are only the official established figures. According to experts, these numbers can be multiplied by 10 to even bring to imagining the true scale of pedophilia. Does this sink in that these children were violated by those who preach to you, bless you, perform the Eucharist and absolve your sins? And this is done by those who dare to say that they have the Holy Spirit upon them directly from the Apostle of Jesus Christ himself. These are the people who call themselves clergy, whom hands your kiss, the very hands they used to hold your children while they raped them. France is far from being the only countries to suffer from this plague. Next, you will hear data from publicly available sources from other countries where there is at least some transparency on these issues. These are the countries where people feel some sense of security and enough freedom to speak about it. But this happened regardless of denomination in all countries where this plague exists. In many countries, people are afraid to speak out and live their entire lives with this secret. And many people end their lives in suicide because of it. During the period of 1970 to 2015, the Church in England and Wales received complaints against 900 clergy members. Over 3,000 children became victims of sexual abuse by them. Australia. In Australia, the Royal Commission found that from 1980 to 2015, there were 4,445 reports of children abused sexually. Belgium. In Belgium, in 2010, the Commission investigating the extent of abuses in the Church made public details about approximately 300 cases of alleged sexual violence involving Belgian clergy. The report was prepared by the Interdiocesan Commission of the Protection of Child and Youths, led by the Honorary Professor of Psychology at the Catholic University of Leuven, Manu Kers. In the preface, he writes, sexual violence or aggressive behaviors is not an illness. It is a crime and abuse of power. Since 2012, a total of 1,064 reports of sexual harassment in the Catholic Church have been received in tiny Belgium, Germany. According to a study initiated by the Conference of German Bishops, in Germany, 
between 1946 and 2014, 1,670 clergy members of the Catholic Church were accused of sexual violence against minors. The estimated numbers of victims was 3,677 children and adolescents. Ireland. In Ireland, in 2009, the government published a report by the Commission of Investigation into the Dublin Archdiocese, which stated that complaints and suspicions were received regarding 172 clergy members from 1975 to 2004. Let's hear the story of Darren from Ireland, a survivor of sexual torture by the local clergyman. As we learn from the Euronews report, his abuser is now in prison for abusive treatment of 200 children. At the age of seven, when I went to that school, he became the parish priest. So he was adorned. He was also an impersonator of Elvis Presley. So he was in a thing called the All Priest Show and they went around the country in halls and clubs. They got paid. So everyone thought, isn't he brilliant? Isn't he great? How amazing is he? And then when he talks on, on the pulpit about his Lord Jesus Christ, he, Jesus is my friend. I'm going to save you. He went home and told me parents. So the dirty secret was out. I now know you're beating that child and your wife. So now my, both my parents, which were adults, were vulnerable to the priest and in his pocket. Because... He knows their dirty secret. So, the priest suggested that I take your son out of this environment because you've damaged him. He's acting out. And you're beating him more. And you don't know how to deal with him. If he comes with me, I can teach him love and he can, he can serve him in morning masses and I will bring him to lovely places. Take a bit of pressure off you. To somebody, a mother of five children, they were all going mad. And the husband was very rarely there. And when he was, was beating the shit over. That was brilliant. My child is safe. What if I was to tell you that a young boy was tied up over a coffee table, bound by his hands to his ankles, and noticed a candle burning, a thin one, but just thought it was a clerical candle. And while I was told that I was born in hell for all eternity, I was raped with the burning candle. Did you hear that? A priest was raping a child and it went on for years. It wasn't until Darren was 12 years old, after seeing a movie on TV about child sexual abuse, that he realized what the priest was doing to him was not normal. From that point on, he started visiting a psychiatrist, but he still feared that no one would believe his testimony in court. Listen to his conversations with the psychiatrist. The lady gave me the doll and says to me, can you show me what happened? And I said, you want me to stick me cock and me penis inside the doll in front of you? And she said, what? I said, but you told me to show you. So you want me to, like, rip the doll and, and ride the doll. She goes, no, just show me. I says, I don't understand. I says, I'd have to do it. I said, but you said it was wrong. So I, why, why do you want me to do something that's wrong? I don't understand that. So they were like, that kind of makes sense. We, did, we, we didn't come across that before. So I says, how about just ask me what happened? So when I was asking, I had to keep asking them and taking the tissues at 12 and saying, are you okay? Because I had traumatised them. To me, it was okay, because I was used to it. Darren has five suicide attempts on his record. Do you realize the sheer horror of what's going on? This is happening 
In all countries where this plague has spread, but in the country we are discussing, there is at least some triumphs of justice, and people can talk about it and seek psychological assistance. In all countries where Christianity is prevalent, regardless of denominations, the same things happen, and on an equally large scale. However, in countries where clergy members control law enforcement agencies and influence the justice system, we do not hear about such cases. There, people cannot even talk about it, and poor children, as they grow up, carry this trauma within them. They have nowhere to prove anything, and no one believes them. They do not receive timely psychological help and often end their lives in suicide. Those who claim to be leading people to God in reality subject them to hellish torment even while they are alive. United States. Now, let's listen to a story from the United States. This was my first time. <laughs> So I was all proud that I was called out to do extra detail, extra work. Instead, Rice says, Pastor John Unger led him through an underground tunnel between the school and church into a secluded choir room. And I was brutally sodomized by, by Father Unger. You were raped. I was raped. Even then, Rice says he knew that beyond the physical pain, what had happened to him was wrong. He asked Unger why. Why would he rape a 10-year-old boy? He said, this makes you a bona fide, certified member now of the Catholic Church. And that if you were to tell anybody, now Kirk, don't you tell anyone, because this is our secret. Jesus will get you if you tell somebody. He will harm your family. But Rice says he soon found out from a half dozen other classmates that he was not alone that the other boys had been sexually assaulted by Unger as well. We told each other. We all knew. We all referred to him as Monster Unger. We never called him Father Unger. We called him Monster Unger. I know for a fact that these children, my friends in my classroom, were brutally and viciously sodomized just like me. He says all six of those classmates live tortured lives and are now gone two from suicide, the others from drugs and alcohol. They didn't make it. They're dead because they were sodomized. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Rape a little kid and he dies 20 years later. It doesn't matter. He was raped. He is dead because they couldn't deal with it. Not an important point. The priest told the child he was raping, that if he ever told about anyone, Jesus would punish him and his entire family. This kind of threat is commonly used by almost all of those who commit sexual abuse on children. They use fear of God, hell, and the last judgment. They are threatened that Jesus will punish them and that they will die in terrible agony if they cannot keep this secret. And this happens everywhere, in all denominations. After experiencing such a trauma, will a person still love God? Let's watch. The yeah, next video excerpt. You're being groomed to get used to uh, a grown man's hands, you know, on you regularly. So he would always have his hands on me. When you have the priest um, touching you every day, you know, that's a hard memory. We, we were taught, I mean, the priests and the nuns are God. Just think, like, the word God makes me think of him, and I just... <laughs> this video is posted on the official website of the Office of Attorney General of Pennsylvania, USA. It states the following. 
This site serves as the holding ground for the results of a two year grand jury investigation into widespread sexual abuse of children within six dioceses of the Catholic Church in Pennsylvania and the systemic cover up by senior church officials in Pennsylvania and at the Vatican. On the same website, there is a report that contains evidence to press charges of sexual violence against 301 clergy members. Continuing to talk about the USA, it's worth mentioning the Bishop Accountability Database. It is the largest public library of information on the crisis of abuse by Catholic clergy. It contains information that more than 7,000 Catholic priests in the USA have been accused of sexual abuse of children over the past 70 years. According to psychiatrist Richard Seib, one pedophile inside the church abuses 250 victims during his life. Can you imagine being a low abiding citizen attending church every Sunday with your entire family, not wanting to feel shame in front of your neighbor, and then realizing that your children could end up in the hands of a pedophile? Orthodox Church. Regarding trials of Orthodox priests accused of pedophilia, there are only a few cases available in the public domain. Although, this doesn't mean that there is no data on this issue. Such a data exists, even if it doesn't receive widespread publicity. The investigation found that the rector of the village church and the bell ringer ravaged 53 boys over the period of 12 years. According to the investigation, their fellow clergyman members even produced porn. Another case, Archpriest Nikolai Stremsky. According to the investigation, 11 children suffered as a result of his action. In Yakutsk, the former director of St. Innocent Orthodox Gymnasium, Yeromonk Meleti, was sentenced to prison. The investigation alleged that he sexually abused his underage student for seven years. Out of 87 episodes of pedophilia, 46 were proven in court. In 2009, Alexander Bersnev, a 41 years old clergyman, was arrested. According to the investigation, he was involved in 18 criminal episodes. The court sentenced him to 20 years in prison. The rector of the church in the Kaluga region, Eromonk Nikon, received a five-year prison sentence. For years, parish owner considered him as a healer, a miracle worker, while he raped a teenager right on the church altar. Here are some quotes from the materials of the criminal case, the testimony of Constantine, a victim of the priest pedophile. The service was already ended, but there was still many people in the church. We were inside a place where only priests are allowed to enter. There was no one there because Father Nikon was conducting the service alone that day. There, Father Nikon, in a normal voice, told me to take off my pants and underwear. I did as I was told. My dad, mom, and grandma always told me to obey priests unquestioningly. When I got dressed, Father Nikon said that all of this is just between me, him, and God and that I should not tell anyone about it. That is our secret. Doesn't this remind you something? Rapists make children keep silence, hiding behind the them of God. As we can see, such a method is prevail everywhere, in all Christian denominations, Latin America. This is a real pandemic. 
The situation with sexual violence by clergy in Latin America countries is not better. In a report by the British non-governmental organization Child Rights International Network, it is stated in Mexico there were 550 alleged violations, in Chile 243, in Colombia 137, and in Argentina 129. From open sources, it is known that in just 2018, the Pope removed about 20% of the leaders of dioceses in Latin American countries. We will read excerpts from articles published in some of the most authoritative mass media. The BBC articles entitled They forced us to get naked and enter in the swimming pool so they could touch us the shocking accounts about the networks of sexual offense and cover-ups involving bishops and priests in Chile. Here, many horrifying stories of victims of sexual abuse by clergy are presented. I will now read a short excerpt from one of the cases mentioned in this article. It involves a conversation between a seminarian and a priest. He asked me why I wouldn't let him initiate me, and I never understood. I thought he was joking. He said that we are all homosexual and needed to experiment. Here's another BBC article. The remote village of Chile, whose residents are afraid to report cases of sexual abuse by priests. According to the reports by the British non-governmental organization Child Rights International Network, the Bolivian prosecutor's office is examining cases from more than 60 people who were victims of sexual violence in childhood by Catholic priests. The wave of investigation begins after fragments of the diary of a Spanish Jesuit were published in the newspaper El País. In the diary, the Jesuit confessed the cruel treatment of 85 children during his time as a teacher in several schools in Latin America, particularly in Bolivia. In the text, the clergyman also recounts how his superior cover up his crimes and reports from some of the victims that reach the other. I cause pain to many people, too many, he confesses. He was never punished or removed from his teaching activities involving children. Once again, we hear about how the leadership turns a blind eyes on sexual abuses. In the final report of the Independent Commission of Studies of Cases of Sexual Violence Against Children in the Catholic Church of Portugal, the confirmed testimony of violence from over 4,300 victims over the last 70 years has been published. Spain. A similar report on sexual abuse within the Catholic Church was also released in Spain. It mentioned 728 alleged perpetrators of child abuse. Poland. In Poland, according to the data from the Statistics Institute of Catholic Church, the number of statements from victims is increasing each year. From 1950 to 2020, there have been claims filled against 282 priests. Let's watch a few excerpts from the Polish movie Don't Tell Anyone, which has generated significant public resonance. Yes, you masturbated with my hands. Kisses that shouldn't be there. You know, I was seven or eight years old. Plus other things. You touched me where you shouldn't have touched me, in my private places. You know, it's really made a very big mark in my adult life. I realize, well, it was the devil who harvested the crop. Do you know at what cost? Do you know what it cost me when the devil harvested this crop? Excuse me? 
Do you know that I still have nightmares? Do you know that I don't sleep at night? Did the Lord God, did Jesus Christ take on little children? Something they taught you for years in the classroom, didn't they? The priest invited me and my friend, the altar boy, to the rectory one Sunday. On the pretext of giving gifts, because it was very popular at that time to help families, the priests were giving out gifts that they have brought from the West. He told me to undress, try it on, take off my shirt. Mm, how about this? Maybe this one will fit, maybe these trousers will fit, maybe these knickers will fit, and so on. Was there a moment when you were naked? Yes, there was a moment when I didn't realize it at all, because that's uh, what was happening. The priest just asked me to put it all on, and I don't know how it happened, but at some point the priest appeared in a robe. I didn't realize anything at the time. I remember being very puzzled, and the priest must have sensed it, because he simply said, don't say anything to your mom, or she'll cut off your penis. Then he touched my penis and had his hands all over it. It was shocking. I have to say that at that time the child's world collapsed. Everything collapsed. I went home. I told my mom. My mom didn't believe me, because in those days it was unthinkable for people. It was just something they couldn't accept, that it could even happen. She rejected it. After that, I said I'm not going to go to altar boys, and I'm not going to be an altar boy. That's been involved in church life. Being an altar boy was very important to my parents, to my mom, so she wouldn't let me give that up. After that, after a couple of months, I stopped eating automatically. I ended up in the hospital once. Second time, third time, I went into anorexia. And it so happened that a priest came to our house to carol. The same priest, Jabrzynski, came to our house. He told me to get off my knees and promise on the cross that I would eat. But it didn't work. It didn't work. I kept promising, but inwardly I still felt that I had to resist it somehow. This led to a very critical situation as my heart muscle had atrophied and I was lying in the hospital with a force drip. It was such a condition that one can say it was life-threatening. The only way I managed to get out of it was by going to a sanatorium Gdańsk. And uh, that marked the end of that period of my life. However, I almost paid it for it with my life. I almost paid with my life, because I couldn't break free in any other way. I rebelled internally against the whole situation. I stopped eating as a child. How do you reconcile the knowledge that half an hour ago the same priest stuck his hand in the child's pants and then distributed communion and read a Mass? One can confidently say that they are followers of the Antichrist, the worshipper of the devil, because Jesus Christ means nothing to them. Because Jesus said the following, But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great milestone fastened on his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Go to the word of temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come, but go to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame, that with two hands or two feet to be thrown into eternal fire. Fire found. I think you'll be very surprised to learn that the Catholic Church officially has a buying of found for clergy for harm caused by sexual abuse. The Catholic dioceses in the United States have paid out more than three billion to the victims of clergy abuse. According to American lawyers, this figure is expected to rise significantly 
In the near future, as more and more lawsuits are filed against the Catholic Church by victims of abuse. Also, huge sums have paid out in many countries around the world. United States, $3 billion. Belgium, 3.9 million euros. Australia, $213 million. France, 22.6 million euros. Imagine the cynism of the whole situation. We bring out our own money to the church so these soulless creatures can buy off the atrocities they committed against our children. Is there a price that can be paid for the ruined life of a children? Have you thought about it? As a father of three children, I'm not even going to answer this question. Because there is nothing more valuable than a human life. And that is what Jesus Christ taught us. Has anyone been held accountable? You have just heard only a small part of the list of publicized cases of sexual abuse in churches. It could go on for a long time. Even in public domain, there is more than enough information about it. What punishment do you think the church imposes for the rape of children by clergymen? As famous lawyer Geoffrey Robertson states in his book, The Case of the Pope, Vatican Accountability for Human Rights Abuse, the Catholic Church has its own very secret juridical system and threats alleged child abuser frighteningly, softly, and does not turn them over the police. Punishment for child rape include things like warning, reprimands, extra prayer, counseling, or several months of the treats. Priests, at best, apologize and say they will pray for their victims and then they'll be transferred to another parish and they will continue to rape other children. For everyone who practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, let his deeds should be exposed. Vatican's response. What is the Vatican's response? Now I invite you to listen the excerpt of an interview with Mary Collins, one of the leaders in the field of prevention of child abuse and child pornography on the Internet. She was the symbol of the Pontifical Commission for the Protection of Minors, but she resigned from the Commission in 2017, and here is why. The Commission was experts outside the church, child protection experts from every area, brought together to advise the Pope, to bring expertise into the church from outside. Um, and I went along with it because if the church was sincere in wanting to change, I thought that I should work to help. Um, but I found after a couple of years that there was so much resistance in the Vatican to change. They were undermining the work of the Commission, they were resisting the work of the Commission, and really we were making recommendations, the Pope was approving them, and they were not being implemented, so it was a waste of time. The Curia, the, the civil service, the Pope's civil service, they saw us on the Commission uh, as people coming in from the outside and interfering. The importance of child protection was ignored, really. It was more politics. Think about it. People who claim to be those who are called to help others come to God rape children all over the world. And more often than not, with impunity. Because the Church itself knows and covers up the shameful trace of the crime of the Church leadership. Reporters from the Boston Globe found this out in 2002, and it became evident after the Vatican summit in 2019. The summit lasted for four days. In the pages of the National Catholic Reporters, we found the following line. In other words, a lot of bishops has not only refused to listen to survivors of sexual abuse, they had threatened them as enemies of the Church. And again, 
many didn't even think this was a problem. And Cardinal Reinhard Marx, who also attended the summit, said the following. Files that could have documented the terrible deeds and named those responsible were destroyed or not even created. The stipulated procedures and processes for the pro prosecution of offenses were deliberately not complied with, but instead cancelled or overridden. You saw horrifying cases from all around the world, tragic stories of victims of clergy sexual abuse, statistics that are incredibly frightening. And this despite the fact that we haven't given all the statistics, we haven't shown all the stories of victims. This is just a small part of the cases that have become public. We have only provided publicly available material to understand the real situation. These data can be multiplied by at least 10, and only then we will come closer to understanding the scale of this catastrophe. The tragedy that happened to each of these children is our common problem. No one is immune from the possibility of their children being raped and maimed one day. No one. Now let's look at how people are responding to this horror. I can only say one thing. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Sir, he's forbidden from celebrating Mass in public chapels. This is my private chapel. He was my superior. I was the Viker. He was my curate. It would be painful to know that my curate had done such a thing. It would be unbearable. It would have been better not to know. People's indifference. We can give thousands of such examples. Why is this happening? It's simple. It is the learned servility. Many parents, even admitting the fact of what happened, believe that they have to put up with it. They view it as a test sent by God that must be passed. Even when a priest raped a child, and it must be endured humbly and silently, for if you go against the priest, you go against the will of God. In other words, if you go against the mediator, you go against God. What God do they mean? Their own God, Satan? This is a learned servility, which is specially imposed to keep people in a state of slaves and fear, so that people think God endured hardship and commanded us to endure too. All the oldies are God's will, and you should meekly accept them. But wait, the priest is raping my child, and I'm supposed to accept it and not to take action? These Antichrist followers refer to the word of the Apostle Peter himself, who said, Be subject to your elders, and all greed on humility one to another, because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Meanwhile, they completely forget what words of Jesus Christ himself, that God is love. All of this information we are showing you is available publicly. Didn't you know before that these things are happening? People know and have heard a lot of things, but they don't want to see the truth. Nobody wants to believe it. Nobody wants to get involved with it. Everybody ignores the problem, saying, it doesn't concern me. Or maybe the whole point is that we are cowards. We are afraid to admit to ourselves that we follow not the adherent of Jesus Christ, but the adherent of the Antichrist. It's an inconvenient truth for us. We don't want to see or know it. Even when defenseless child reaching out for God meets 
the devil in priest's robe instead. They are not children of other people. This is our trampled future. The Bible says, if you don't do what you know is right, you have sinned. All evil happens solely because people support it. The bishops are responsible, but so are other people too. For example, the families or other guardians. We need some larger changes in our society so that every person pays attention to each other. You know, we agree with him. In this case, he is right. It's the fault of all humanity. It is our fault that we allow such things. Up until today, we support, finance and allow followers of the Antichrist to commit all this horror, not only with our children, whom they abuse, but also with us, whom they are intimidate and brainwash to such an extent that we can't even protect our own children. Followers of Jesus Christ will never do such a thing. All these horrors are just covered up by the church system. They are covered up by the whole society. Violence is the essence of a rotten modern society. It is the essence of a consumerist format. And as long as the consumerist format exists, all of this will just continue. Undoubtedly, the guilty must be exposed and held accountable. But there remains a problem. If we remove them, order will take their place and it will all happen again. Therefore, to truly change this, it is not enough to just punish the guilty. The more important things is to eliminate the root cause. No matter how you look at it, in order to change something, you have to change the entire system. No matter how we will change specific people, nothing will improve. All this happens and will continue to happen as long as people keep silent and endow someone else with power. Yet, who does the power belongs to? Remember the words that the devil said to Jesus when showing him all the kingdoms of the world, all of these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. The power in this world belongs to Satan. The pedophilia of the clergy is not just perversion, it is much worse. They are magical rituals. These rituals have been performed from times immemorial and are still being performed today precisely to increase power. Power over us. And as you can see, it works, since we cannot even protect our own children. And that's worth thinking about. Jesus said, there shall not be authority. And the one condition when there won't be power of one person over another is the creative society. And here is the question, what will we choose? Will we continue going to the dark after the followers of the Antichrist? Or will we follow Jesus?